Oh snap, one button just like that. We should be live, I hope. Ta-da! Should be part seven. Why did I say part six? It doesn't matter. Hey everybody, what's happening? We are back with more media server fun. And we also have a bit of a new setup here, so hopefully everything is working as expected. Let me raise that just a tad. Wah, 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 wah. There we go. Now we have a microphone in front of us, and hopefully this improves the audio quality, audio quality greatly just as I wiggle it around. Um, <clears throat> so, a bunch of updates on this project, uh, which is why there's been a bit of a hiatus with this live stream. Um, number one, we have um, made a deal with the seller of the new media server, and I have taken it off his hands uh, for a wonderfully low price. So big thank you to the seller, if you ever happen to be watching this. Next, we are also going to, we did some modifications to it. Number one, it had a four gigabyte little drive. Let me see if I have it here so I can demonstrate it. Um, oh, here, I do have it right here. So installed in this media server was this tiny drive and let me switch angles so you can see it a little better. Bam, so there it is. It had this little drive. It's basically a flash drive, just the circuit of a flash drive. And what this did was, it was a, the original installation of FreeNAS. It was on a four gig drive, this one. And in theory, that seems like a great idea, but that seemed to cause a lot more problems because even though I did format it, for some reason, FreeNAS was still detecting it as a bootable drive and it would try to negotiate with it even though there was no installation on it as far as I know. So there was that issue. Um, let me go back here. And then, once we got that done, we tried to install uh, FreeNAS on several different USB sticks. I actually bought two additional USB sticks to try to get this thing to work. And to no avail could I get it installed on any USB stick. And I, I even went as far as contacting FreeNAS and letting them know, hey, I tried all these USB sticks, none of them worked. They're like, yeah, we're aware of the issue, uh, just put it on a hard drive. So uh, luckily I had a old uh, two and a half inch 20 gigabyte hard drive from like 10, 15 years ago that's just been sitting there. So that is now my bootable drive. And that installed perfectly fine. There was no installation issues. We got it up and running. I did leave this little drive out of there um, just because I'm not gonna use that little six gig drive. So there was that. I also installed a video card in it. I don't know how it's being detected, if at all, because I cannot get to a monitor. I cannot use that video card to um, plug it into a monitor and just view everything. I'm still using my VGA which if I go over here oh my goodness oh my goodness I have a terrible setup right now but this is the best I can do it's arguably better than my previous setup but I have it right here VGA if we need to look at it but as you can see it's up and running I have IP address and I'm connected to it um, right here so it's right there it doesn't get as simple as that. We're, we're inside. I forgot the password, but it was saved on the computer. So there's that. So FreeNAS is up and running. It's working. Now the only thing we, I got to do is I got to set up the, um, the drives themselves to be able to start putting data on them. So I am not too familiar with FreeNAS. It's going to be a bit of a learning curve for both of us if you are also not familiar with FreeNAS. So I don't know how long this is going to take, but theoretically it should be as easy as hitting a, a few buttons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the free NAS documentation and then we're going to kind of just reference that because it's supposed to be really good. Um, okay, operating system storage and storage disk and controllers. So 
this machine down here that I got it's a HP little small form factor uh, DC 7100 let me confirm that it's I don't think it's 7100 7700 maybe how do I look at my messages here right here 7900 I was close so it's a HP compact DC 7900 small form factor computer it has a raid controller installed which uh, supports SAS drives and if you don't know what SAS drives are they're basically like regular hard disks except they specialize in being able to um, read and write information simultaneously so that way if you're you know uploading something to it you can still view stuff off of it without having performance affected um, so that's kind of the idea behind that behind that and so because this is outfitted with that raid controller or I, I guess it's not even a raid controller it's just like a drive controller doesn't matter it has something that's in between me and the drives from from the drives in the motherboard rather so um, I don't know if that's gonna cause any issues but let's go ahead and see how this is all gonna work so let's go and check out the discs here we go so there are five total discs in there not including my uh, 20 gigabyte boot drive I think there's five other discs so there's four SAS drives which are I want to set up as two that are actually storing information and then two that are backing everything up so that's that's gonna be the idea behind that and that should give us about eight terabytes I think they're four terabytes each does it say here I might have to zoom out a bit to see the numbers why is this size not showing that is a bit concerning uh, it's not showing me the disk size what happens if I do this okay let's see I do not see the disk drives themselves so let me see here um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay ZFS okay I know some of these words let's just go to setting up the drives themselves how about that all right so so under pools is that's where we actually set up and manage the ZFS pools and data sets Z volumes uh, proper storage design is important for any NAS please read through this chapter before configuring di storage disks features as this Features are described to help make it clear which are beneficial for particular uses and caveats or hardware restrictions which limit usefulness. That's good to know. Well, I haven't started just yet. But the idea is two drives are going to be able to store data, two drives back up, and then we have one drive which is an SSD, a very old SSD, mind you. This thing is pretty ancient. It's probably one of the first SSDs. But it's a 64 gig, and we're going to configure that to be a cache drive. And I'm hoping I can use the video card I installed as like a video encoder of sorts. Um, but that's like far down the line. Let's, let's set up the storage options first and then move on from there. So here's the disks themselves. I don't know what to do with this. So if I click edit, I want to see what options are available. Okay, let's cancel that. Let's go to pools. No pools. You know, maybe we should read through it instead of just following along. Um, we're not going to have encrypted pools because, I mean, this isn't sensitive data we're in having here. It's just media. Uh, encryption operations. Adding cache or log devices. We'll come to that after we store the actual, or after we set up the actual um, storage disks. Adding spare devices. Extending a pool. Export or disconnect a pool. Um, I'm assuming a pool is like you can section off a part of the hard drive if you want to have one hard drive have separate pools but we just want I want to combine both to act as or both drives to act as one huge drive so that way it's, it should just be one pool where I'm just gonna to toss everything make it simple for me to just upload media importing a pool we're not going to be doing that 
decrypting disks before importing pool, viewing pool scrub status, adding data sets. We don't have any data sets. This isn't that kind of uh, database. Deduplication, we don't need that. Compression, maybe. Maybe, I don't, I don't know if I want to compress because that might affect video quality. Setting permissions. Okay, I think I might have to set permissions so I could actually put stuff in the drive from my computer. And we're probably going to have to use something like WinSCP, I guess, if I can't get it to show up as a network drive. Snapshots, browsing snapshot collection, creating a, okay, we don't need snapshots. Uh, let's go up here to, uh, it's before encryption. All right, creating pools. Let's read through it, and then um, we'll figure it out. Let me actually get this on the screen so you guys could follow along with what I'm doing here. Uh, can I duplicate this? I'll just do a copy. Do a paste duplicate. Oh, there you go. It's already showing the one I'm looking at. How convenient. All right, let me zoom in just like that. Okay, so this is the section on creating pools. Um, I did this once with the older server that I was working on before switching to this one. I'm trying to remember how we did it. Uh, it didn't seem too complicated from what I remember. Um, but let's go ahead and read up. So, um, I think I read that already. Creating pools. 10.2.1 Before creating a pool, determine the level of required redundancy, how many disks will be added, and if any data exists on those disks, creating a pool overwrites disk data, so save any required data to, to a different media before adding disks to a pool. Okay, so as I said, we're going to do two drives are going to be our data pools, and two drives are going to be our backup drives. And um, we do have the cache, which we're going to come to later. And there's no data on there. Those are actually newly formatted. Um, there shouldn't be anything. Actually, I don't even know if they're formatted. They might just be blank drives at this point in time. But anyways, that's our situation. Okay, go to storage, pools, click add, select create new pool and create pool. And click create pool to open the screen showing in figure 10.2.1. So let's go add, create a new pool. Click on create a new pool. We're gonna name this, um, how about just main? underscore pool. Should I even capitalize it? I think I'm going to leave everything lowercase. Main pool. All right. Um, so here, they're two terabytes each. So each of those drives are two terabytes. We have five. Five? Five? We have five drives in there? There's supposed to be four. Well, five counting the SSD. But it says the SSD is, so this one up here, this is our boot drive. That, that's why it's only 20 gigs. And then we have five other drives. Wait, where's the SSD then? SSD is 64 gigs. Okay, now I'm confused thoroughly. Um, is it a 20 gig SSD? Wait, is that not the boot drive? That's why it says unknown. Hold on, is it dangerous to move this around while, I'm, while I have it on? Yeah, it's a 64 gig SSD. It's not a 20 gig SSD. Uh, hmm. That changes things. There's a fifth drive in here, but I only see, unless there's one underneath that I can't see, which is highly likely. Are these all the same model of drives? WD, so it's Western Digital. You know, let me just open all of these and we'll compare them. Yeah, these are the same. These are the same. These are they're all the same drives. There's five of them. I thought there was four. We learn something new every day about this machine. Uh, okay, let me think. Let me think. How are you doing this? We can only back up two drives. 
and the third one will be not backed up. I'm still confused why my SSD is not showing up here. It's a little concerning. Okay. So D0 and 1 will be our main pool. How do I select them? Okay. So let's move on. Oh, wait. You don't see what I'm seeing. Okay. My bad. I wish I knew you guys weren't looking at this. So um, we're going to call this the main pool. This is basically the screen after the one, well, you, you saw. So main pool here, we're going to select these two drives, and what do we do next? Enter a name for the pool in the name field. I said we were going to read it before following along. Screw that. <laughs> uh, ensure that the chosen name conforms to the naming convention. Ooh, there's a naming convention. Uh, each component can only contain alphanumeric characters in addition to the following four special characters, underscore, hyphen, colon, period. Pool names must begin with a letter except for the following restrictions. To begin the sequence, character 0 through 9 is not allowed. Uh, the name log is reserved. A name that begins with mirror, raid Z, raid Z1, raid Z2, raid Z3, or spare is not allowed because these names are reserved. Pool names must contain a percent sign. Pool names must not contain. Okay, percent sign. Data set names. Okay, uh, I think we can form with main pool. We're fine. Choosing a name that will stick out in the, in the logs is recommended rather than a generic name like data or free NAS. Well, main pool works for us. That's what we're doing. To encrypt data on an underlying disk, we don't need that, so let's skip that. Refer to the warning, managing encrypted pools. Okay. Uh, from the available, available disk section, select the disks to add to the pool, enter a value in filter disks by name or filter disks by capacity to change the displayed disk order. These fields are supported for filtering or, ex for example, to only show DA NVD disks in, okay. Type of maximum capacity, okay, we don't need maximum capacity. You know what, maybe I'll have three disks and then two will be backup but it's not gonna make sense there's, there's not enough storage space you can't have six terabytes being backed up by four terabytes I mean, how much does it actually compress it you know what I'll do this we'll create zero one and then two three and then four will be we'll call it a different pool it'll be a separate pool there you go problem solved let me bring this down a little bit. I'm getting cut off. I'm trying to read this stuff. Uh, where was I? After selecting disks, click the right arrow to add them to the data VDEV section. Right arrow. Oh. It doesn't look like it should because I'm zoomed in. There you go. We should be seeing left and right. So let's do that. Estimated raw capacity. Why? Shouldn't it be both of these? So that should be close to four terabytes. Why? Oh, not mirror. Stripe? Yes, there it is. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. Okay. What's next? The usable space of each disk in a VDEV is limited to the size of the smallest disk in the VDEV. Okay. Additional data VDEVs must be the same configuration as the initial VDEV. Any disks that appear in data VDEV are used to create the pool. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So this pool applies to these disks. After adding one data VDEV, additional data VDEVs can be added with repeat. This creates additional VDEVs of the same layout as the initial VDEV. Select the number of additional VDEVs and click Repeat VDEV. There's also a reset layout, returns all disks to available disks. Area is now closed, but okay. Suggest the layout, arrange all disks in an optimal layout for both redundancy and capacity. Where, where's that? That'd be nice. Let's do reset layout. 
And then what was the button I have to click? Suggest layout. Interesting, RAID Z2. That gives me nearly six terabytes. All right, let's do the suggested layout, right? I mean, why not? That's what we're here for. Oh, right here, RAID Z2 requires at least four disks. Can we get some more information on that? That, that works for me. Almost six terabytes? That's pretty good. I don't, I mean, I gotta find a way to add more drives to it, but that's a problem for later. There's, it's a really small form factor. Let me show you what I'm working with here. Uh, there we go. Bam. So here it is. This is the drive. I don't know. Or the computer. Super blurry. I don't know why it's so blurry. But um, here's the RAID controller. Let me show you the front. I guess not RAID controller. Controller. Drive controller. So there's the four disks. And I think the fifth one is down here where you can't really see it from up here. Here's the 20 gig, uh, two and a half inch drive I was talking about. So that's my boot drive right there. And then I got the video card snuggled in there. It's the one with the black heat sink. So that's in there. Um, that one is a NVIDIA GT8400, I think, or GS8400. It's a pretty old video card. It doesn't even matter. And then you have the SSD underneath. It's right there with the shiny label. And then you got the power supply. And that's pretty much it. So that's the setup we got there. Uh, let me put that back. Let's go back to the display and all that has brought us this beauty here so I'm trying to figure out how am I gonna set this up um, I think we're gonna just stick with this so let's move along here after the desired layout is configured click create a dialog shows a reminder that all disk contents will be erased click confirm then create pool to create the pool so I'm going to hit this create button down here. You don't see it. Uh, why is it not showing? Why is it not showing? Um, that sucks. I don't know what to do. It doesn't scroll any lower. I'm going to have to zoom out a bit. How about that? Ta-da! Can we do a little bigger? No, that doesn't work whatsoever. Let's just stick with that. So there's a create button down here. We're going to create it. We're going to use all five drives. And it looks like um, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Create. Create pool. All right, let, us do its, let it do its thing. Next up, what we want to do is... Oh, that was quick. We want to set it up so we could actually access this thing. Um, let's see here. This is encryption, swap space, pools. Now we did creating pools, so uh, I think we're done here. Maybe setting permissions? Do I have to set permissions? Setting permissions is an important aspect of managing data access. The web interface is meant to be set, meant to set the initial permissions for a pool or data set to make it available as a share. When a share is made available, the client operating system and ACL manager is used to fine tune the permissions of the files and directories that are created by the client. Sharing contains configurations, examples for set, wait. Sharing contains configuration examples for several types of permission scenarios. This section provides an overview, blah, blah, blah. So let's do setting permissions. Uh, to set permissions on a data set, select storage, pools, click options, then edit permissions. So I would assume I go here, 
edit options. Now it's too small for even me to read. Oh, that wasn't it. Storage, pools. I don't have the edit permissions. Root data set permissions cannot be edited. What? Did I miss something here? I feel like I missed something. Hmm. What did I miss here? Okay. Um I'm at storage, I'm at pools. it missing why is it not allowing for the permissions root data set permissions cannot be edited okay am I supposed to create a pool within a pool I mean uh, hmm It says here, for users and groups to be available, they must either be first created using the instruction in accounts or imported from a directory service using the instructions in directory services. Okay, so I think I have to do the accounts thing first. So maybe let's go to accounts, users. Uh, should I just create a new user, I guess? No, I think we should create a group first. I have root. What are the groups that I have? Operator, news, guest, bind, wheel. FTP I think I'll just uh, do users I'll add uh, I'm just gonna put Sako my username is also Sako oops Email doesn't matter. Password. New primary group, user ID 1000, because I keep it 1000. Uh, I have all sorts of permissions. SSH, public key. I don't have a public key. I don't have a private key. This is a local server. Primary group, group, goop. Primary goop, auxiliary groups, doesn't matter. I think we're done here. So I created a user. I don't think that is going to change anything when it comes time to managing pools. What is this? Dismiss this. Uh, so let's go back to storage, pools. can't edit the permissions.
root data set permissions cannot be edited. What the hell does that mean? You have to create a data set for your pools. So add a data set. Uh, let's go back to this. We need the documentation here. Creating a pool. Where's the data set stuff? Control F data set. What the hell is this data set for? I don't, I don't understand that part. I'm supposed to add a data set? I don't remember doing that last time. Okay, let's just try it. I'm gonna call it the same thing. Main pool. Uh, just leave everything default, right? I don't know what I'm doing at this point in time. Okay. Not sure what happened, but we have a additional row here. So now we can edit permissions. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with the SACO user because that is me. Read, write, other. Uh, which group? Doesn't matter, I guess. Okay. So I did that. Now when I go to sharing, Windows shares, add, main pool. Can I do that? Use as home share, what does that mean? Set a lot to share home, home directories, each is given a personal home directory. No, we don't want that. And save. Enable the service. SMB service has been enabled. So that means we should have access to this. What happened here? Editor Saco. Save. Nice one inheritable ACL entry is required. I don't know what that means. I'm just going to cancel that real quick. Uh, let me see if I can actually access this as a network drive. Oops. Oh, we got in. I see the main pool. Oh, freaking sweet. All right, it looks like it's usable already. I didn't have to do anything else. So once I set the permissions here, then I went and I w did the share, I have access to it. That is dope. Freaking dope. So I'm in the main pools drive here. Let me uh, share that. Add uh, window capture folder. Okay. There it is, main pool. Whoa, I regret doing that. Let's not do that. Um, 
Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It's here. You just have to take my word for it. All right. Um, let's see here. At this point, I think I'm just going to start putting stuff in there. Oh, uh, we got to set a plex. So let's go to certain those plugins. Go to plugins, main pool. All right, using main pool. Uh, how do I search for it? There's a way to search for it. Community. What oh, get plugins failed? Refresh the index. What? How dare you? Okay, the first thing that popped up was something about a DNS. Let's see if that's working. Global configurations, IPv4 default gateway. Is that the problem? Uh, interfaces. Okay, let's cancel that. I think there's no name server, which is a problem. How's there no name server? How are you? Default gateway. Whoops. Dot one six eight dot one dot one. Name server one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one seven. I believe is the one. Uh, should we do a backup? No. Let's just see what happens with this. Uh, I hope it's 117. I was having trouble connecting to my router. I couldn't confirm. Oh no. It went to a blank screen. Don't tell me I screwed something up. Woo! That was scary. That was scary. It looks different. Oh no. All hell, hell is breaking loose. is smart Wi-Fi more like stupid Wi-Fi why would you overcomplicate your router I mean like honestly so I'm gonna download the app how about you suck a lemon I want to confirm my DNS IP address oh, God Securely logging me in. And now my UI won't even load in, in FreeNAS. What happens? Where'd you. Oh God. I 
I'm getting errors on screen. Check this out. We got some errors here. Uh, it says G E O M mirror device mirror swap launched. That looks like it was setting up the drives. And then the last thing it says FreeNAS Smart ID device currently unreadable. All right, I think I'm going to do a hard reboot here. Can I do a soft reboot? I can. Let's do a soft reboot. Oh man, that was scary to read. Let's close that. Panic pandemonium problems. Okay, stop telling me to download the app. That beep is fine. Everybody, it's okay. I just need you to trust. Am I a little worried? Yes. Yes, I am. Just ever so slightly. It does not support my browser. What are you talking about? It says my router does not support my browser. That's such BS. Oh, look at that. We're back. A little reboot and two is all was needed. Right? I don't know. It's not letting me click stuff now. Oh no. Because I haven't fully booted in. What is going on back there? And I don't know why my mic seems like it's popping in and out. Hopefully that's not an issue. If it is, maybe somebody will tell me instead of just coming and leaving. I can't test these things. How am I supposed to test? I guess I could just go to the stream. What's happening here? Attempting to boot from hard drive. Don't make an attempt. Make it happen. There it is. Booting. Free NAS. In the meantime, let me make sure that my channel is not freaking wigging out here. Oh no. I don't know if anyone else is getting these political ads, but it's getting rather annoying. I don't know if anyone else is getting these political ads, but it's getting rather annoying. Beautiful. It's actually, this sounds really good. It sounds much better than my previous streams. All right. Um, it looks like it's actually booting up without any issues, so that's good. I don't know why I looked down there. That song in the background has been going on for a little too long. You better, not, I swear, if I get a copyright strike for that, girlfriend is in the other room watching a movie. If I get dinged, we're gonna have a problem. My only problem with this is the boot time. It's a little slow to boot. Um, then again, it's like 10 years old, if not more. Probably should have had some royalty free music up in the back. Wait a minute. Okay. I thought it said link change to down, but then I see the up message right under. That's right there. Starting up, starting up. Come on. There it is. Boom. We're back. We connect. Yes, we can. Try to log in with that new user I made. Nope, I have to use the root. I don't remember the root password it said. Okay, let me switch back. Back in business. There it is. We have the main pool, which is accessible. Um, let's try getting the plugin again. Oh, there we go. It's working. So it looks like the DNS updated successfully. I don't know why it stopped working at some point. So we want Plex. And to install this is as easy as just going to this page and hitting install.
jail name. So let's give it a name. Let's we'll call it the Plex server. I don't know. What else do you call it? Do they have instructions on downloading and installing it? No, it just says jails are basically virtualization environments. Jail storage pool must be created before using a jail plugin. Blah, 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 blah. Creating a jail, blah, blah, blah. They don't tell you anything about Plex itself because I don't think they're responsible for the plugin. You're supposed to go to the plugins um, documentation. Let me Google it, see if uh, it shows up. I oh, know they have a how to section, but it's on their website and it's made by a third party, it looks like. Cosmo Kramer! <laughs> Didn't expect him. That's hilarious, actually. Um, yeah. This tells you how to do it on the command line. Dude, we are not that savvy. Well, we are, but we're not trying to do command line. That's It's a laziness issue right now. Oh, here, someone has pictures. Twenty percent initial validation complete. Oh, it's gonna suck is waiting for all the data to transfer to it. Oh man. Should be fine. Hopefully it's fine. Says it could take five to ten minutes. Jeez, that's a big package installation. My packages are never that huge. Um, it says if you do not have already, if you if you do not already have a pool, create a separate pool for your media. Wait, what? We have to create a separate pool as opposed to the pool we just made. That doesn't seem right. I'm gonna let this do its thing. Uh, do we still have access to the main pool? Where is it? I got a message. All right. Sorry about that. Messages, got to reply. Um, it's hot as hell in here. And I took the AC out, unfortunately. Oh, we're going to have to visit, revisit that. What I'm still upset about is that I cannot access my freaking router. Not on the app, not on the... The web browser, that router is gone. That's the next thing I'm working on. Getting rid of the freaking router. I hate it. I hate that router so much. I would not recommend it to anybody. Okay, so plugin installed successfully. Sweet! That's what I'm talking about. 
So we can actually go visit this now. And we get right into the Plex server. Just like that. Um, I do have a Plex account. I think it's with the email. Uh, oh, I don't remember the password. Okay, I'm going to do that real quick. Here, let me do this. Take a look at that while I figure this out. Oops. Nope. I forgot. So now we've got to reset the password. Why do I not see it? Oh, there it is. I clicked it. Update. Done. All right, let's go back to life, back to reality. Oops, that's not the one. Oh, what the hell? I lost it. What the? What happened? All right, I, I don't know what happened there. Are you kidding me? I lost it. It's no longer showing up on OBS. Wow, thanks OBS. Thanks. Well, that sucks. Uh, sometimes OBS is just stupid, so I don't even know what to say. Um, I, I can't even add a new window. And I'm going through a setup, and I'm not trying to ruin that.
cancel. Okay, why am I not able to see it? Add a library for movies. Okay, browse. Okay, let's cancel. I think I have to somehow edit it so that I could share that. Oh man. I think I'm just gonna leave that here because it's better than a black screen for right now. Um, mount points, maybe? Add a mount point. Okay, so I have to close. All right, let's do this. We are not going to add <clears throat> okay so plux is empty right now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna stop the plex server I'm gonna end the stream and we're gonna come back and continue because I have to show you what I'm doing otherwise this is kind of pointless so uh, I will be right back nearly immediately